phone. Yeah, I, 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 can't, re I can't really get, get to them. Uh, <coughs> Alan, could you come in here, please? <laughs> Come on in, Alan. What a... Mike. Um, now, Alan, could you please tell Mike what you told me? Mike, I saw you take three reams of paper from the photocopier last Thursday and put them in your car. Oh, shit. D don't worry, Mike. It's, uh... It's, it's not a serious offence. I've not called you in here to sack you. Just relax. It's not even a warning. It's, it's just a pre-warning warning. OK. Sorry, Martin. It, it won't happen again. Oh, no, no hard feelings, Mike. Just uh, get back to your desk and get those orders coming in. Will do. Oh, and, uh, Mike. I'd love to come to your barbecue on Sunday. <laughs> OK. See you then. Oh, um... Alan, would, would you mind staying? Uh, I've got some stuff through from head office I'd like to discuss with you. Sure. Bye, Mike. See you soon. Bye. Bye, Mike. See you, Alan. Bye. 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 Actually, Mike, you, you might as well stay for this. <laughs> right, OK. And you, you join us as the dogs continue to play to, to the best of their abilities. And we've decided, for the sake of speed, to take any disturbance of the chips at all as a bet. <laughs> and yet still, none of the dogs has knocked out any of the other dogs. Now, uh, Peter, if, if you were this young chihuahua, which card would you play? Well, you don't really have to play cards in poker, Ted. You just get them. Right, so, so it's not like whist. What, where each dog has to hold a hand, or should I say paw, of 13 cards and then plays them in sequence following suit? Yeah. No. <laughs> I think even Dave thought that was a bit ambitious. So, if, if it's not like whist, is it like strip Jack naked or stop the bus? No. What, what about draw the well dry or bullshit? It is quite like bullshit. St. Bernard seems to be getting the hang of it. Is, is that a St. Bernard? I don't know, Ted. I don't know anything about dogs. Neither do I, Peter. And I don't know anything about poker either. What I know about is snooker. Well, then, you shouldn't have tried to finger Hazel. I did not finger Hazel. I didn't say you fingered Hazel. I said you shouldn't have tried to finger Hazel. Lesbian. No, it is a St. Bernard. Have you got any old, unwanted, or unsecured plutonium just lying around? If you send it to cash for plutonium, you can turn it into cold hard cash. I had some plutonium left over from the Cold War. I wasn't expecting to get much cash, but cash for plutonium sent me lots of cash. For my plutonium! Your old, useless, and unwanted plutonium could be feeding mankind's never-ending appetite for self-destruction. Just pop your plutonium into this totally secure envelope. Post it to us at the address on your screen, and we'll send you some cash. With the cash we got for our unsecured plutonium, we bought more plutonium. Alhamdulillah. If you're happy with the cash we offer, you could be holding that cash within a few days, and more importantly, not holding the plutonium. And I do mean cash. Remember, money does not grow on trees, and come the nuclear winter, neither will anything else. You can take the cash we offer and buy a plasma screen TV, some fruit, or something you might like. It genuinely doesn't matter. We accept any old plutonium you have stashed around the house, in your dresser drawer, down the back of the sofa, or wherever you keep it. And we offer a much better price than other internet plutonium buyers. Thank, Thank you, Cash for Plutonium. Remember, we are a reputable international company and not a transparent front for a crazed Bond villain. <laughs> Call the number on your screen now. Now is the time to swap your plutonium, which melts your face, for cash, which doesn't. Now, the reason for our urgency should be apparent. This is plutonium we're talking about. Send this plutonium now. Plutonium. Just really try to feel the space and feel the presence of everyone around you. 
and then try to imagine the world, the world that we're about to create on the stage. Don't worry about the text for the time being. Put that to one side and just try to feel your way. <laughs> and when you're ready, vocalize it. Make a sound. Doesn't have to be words, just a small, honest sound that tells me what you're feeling. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> very good, Steve. Very good. We shall not surrender. Oh, wonderful, wonderful work. Okay. Oh. Well, maybe that's a good time to stop. Let's uh, let's take five, everybody. <laughs> Great. Paul, hi. I didn't think you were going to make it to this rehearsal. Uh, yeah, yeah, I had, I had that meeting, but that's finished now. Well, that's great. Well, um, you can join us for the afternoon session. You want to lead the workshop? Uh, actually, uh, actually, Mark, I, I wanted to talk to you about something. I know what you're thinking. Our devised piece about Tiananmen Square isn't as avant-garde as it should be yet, but it will be, I promise. No, really, it, it wasn't that. I'm, I'm sure the devising process will be as fulfilling and daring as ever. <laughs> no, it's just that I had this meeting. Oh, and... Mark. Uh, well, you've got a moment. Could I have a quick chat to you about um, an adaptation of some of Sartre's writing that I've been doing, where we're all blindfolded? I think it might highlight multiculturalism. Oh, that's great, Steve. That's great. But uh, can you just give us a moment? Oh, sorry. Yes, sure. Uh, my meeting. Who was it with, Paul? It was with Lion Bars. <laughs> you had a meeting with Lion Bars? Yeah, it was the people who make Lion Bars. And, and th they were saying that, that Lion Bars could sponsor our show if, if we put Lion Bars on the poster uh, and eat Lion Bars all the way through it. <laughs> lion Bars? Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty amazing deal from the guys at Lion Bars. Uh, th th they were saying that, that, that we can have pretty much as many Lion Bars as, as we want <laughs> for, for the production and, and for when we're rehearsing. Lion bars. Yeah, look. <laughs> that is literally nothing compared to the amount of lion bars we could have. They, they were saying that basically we can have an endless supply of lion bars. And, and then if, if they give us loads and loads of lion bars for the run, like more lion bars than you've ever seen in one place, but then we run out because we've been eating them on stage and, and you know, in, in the wings when we're waiting to go on because we like the chocolate so much. Well. I, I could just go back to the Lion Bar building and get a load more Lion Bars. <laughs> They've got so many. Paul, we're trying to bring the Tiananmen Square massacre to life, examining its drive and its politics. I just don't think that's going to work if everyone's eating Lion Bars all the way through. <laughs> Look how much it looks like a lion's mouth. Oh, no, that one didn't really work, but you get the general idea. Rawr! <laughs> OK, well, how much money are they offering? Money? Not, not, not money, Mark. Lion bars. <laughs> lion bars? Not, not money. What do you mean, not money? Sorry, could, could I have a lion bar? You can have as many as you like, Steve. They're free. Really? What, what free, free? Yeah. Just dig in. That's the tip of the chocolatey iceberg. Wow! That's amazing! <laughs> that one worked. So, so, Steve, do you think it would hurt your Sartre play if, if we were all eating lion bars all the way through it? Would we get free lion bars? As many as we want. I think it would make it brilliant, huh? <laughs> so, what, do, what do you say, Mark? Lion Bar presents a wafer caramel and crisp rice covered indictment of Tiananmen Square. <laughs> well. Okay! Hooray! <laughs> One nil to theatre! <laughs> Ever wondered what Montezuma's revenge really means? Dan Snow is off to Mexico tonight to find out. That's at 10. Up next on BBC HD, it's Shooting Stars.